So uh, I'm going to very briefly introduce them. The first thing they're going to do is introduce themselves. And again, if you don't have speaker view on right now, you're going to want that on so you can see them among all 80-ish of our faces. Um, so we've got Audrey joining us from Northern Illinois University. We've got Cloretta joining us from Sauk Valley Community College. Uh, Heather from Vienna High School. Uh, Isabella, who goes to school in Rockford. And Anne, who is a middle school student in Grays Lake in School District 46, uh, not to be confused with Elgin's U46. And so with that said, um, we're going to bring them up and I'm going to put Audrey on the spot first and ask her to begin by introducing herself. Hi everyone, my name is Audrey Lederman. I am a student at Northern Illinois University. I am a first generation college student and um, I transferred here after um, two years at McHenry County Community College. And I'm proud to say I'm graduating this spring. My final day of my program is tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, my degree is a bachelor's of science in human development in family sciences. And I have an emphasis in child development and a specialty in parenting and infancy. And I am in the process of applying for graduate school and um, I am hoping to earn a master of social work and I aspire to have a career providing family education and facilitating positive parent-child interactions. Um, yeah, that's, that's me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, everyone. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Audrey. Uh, Claretta, you're up next. If we can have you introduce yourself, tell us about what you're studying and at the moment where your career interests lie. Uh, hello, I am Claretta Kern Lyons. Um, I am going to Sauk Valley Community College. I am getting my associates in liberal studies. Uh, currently, I'm going into the Marines after I get my associates done, um, mostly just because I want to go in at a higher rank than uh, everyone else. But I also just wanted to get a jump start on on my college career uh, before I go in. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Claretta. We'll be very interested to hear more of your thoughts. Heather, can you jump in and introduce yourself? Okay. Um, Heather actually couldn't make it today. So oh. my name is Emma. I'm so sorry. That's great, Emma. Thank you. And my name's Emmy, and we're from Vina High School, our seniors. So we've got two special guests from Vienna High School, and I apologize to everybody that I wasn't aware of that. Can you guys go ahead and tell us um, what you're interested in studying after high school and, and what you think your career, what where your career interests lie? Um, me, I'm going to go into physical therapy. I'm not sure where yet, but that's my plan. And I'm going to go into early childhood education, and I'm not sure where yet either. Sounds great. Well, we're really glad to have both of you. Thank you so much. We're going to shift to Isabella all the way at the opposite end of the state now in Rockford. Isabella, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, um, I'm Isabella Hernandez. I go to Auburn High School. Um, I'm in the gifted and the creative and performing arts here. And um, as of college, I don't know where I'd like to go, but I definitely want to major in um, public health and microbiology. And then I hope to uh, go in, go to medical school. And I would love to either be um, an epidemiologist or a infectious disease doctor. So yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we've we've all learned a little bit this year about what you want to learn a lot more about. So that's yes. fantastic. Um, and Anne, our, our last student on our panel from Grays Lake. Anne, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? And while you haven't even begun high school yet, tell us what you think you might want to do on the other side of high school as well. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Annie, and I go to Park School in Grays Lake, Illinois. Um, I'm very involved in sports. I play basketball, softball, and I run cross country. Uh, as of right now, and for a long time, I want to be a doctor, go into medicine. So even though I'm only in eighth grade, that's what I want to do. So one of the things that's interesting as I listen to that is that 
essentially all of these all of these current students have just express their interest in being part of, of what I would call the helping professions, right? Um, and so that's, I think, a really important thing. But before we talk about long-term for them, we want to hear about their learning experiences for this year. So um, what were the aspects of learning that you liked or that you thought actually helped you this year? What were the, the really positive surprises for you? And for this, I'm going to go in the same order. We'll, we'll start with Audrey and then go to Claretta, Vienna High School up to Auburn High School and then and then to Ann and Grays Lake. So uh, Audrey, if you can get us started about what were the things that you liked and, and were positive surprises about learning this year? Sure, I found virtual um, synchronous delivery to be um, very enjoyable. The synchronous part is key because I feel like it was the balance for um, holding me accountable and keeping me in a consistent um, schedule and feeling like I was still attending school while also um, providing that flexibility. And um, I found it was helpful to be able to um, attend school anywhere. I was able to sit or stand and kind of fidget around as needed. I was able to eat in class or in class <laughs> as needed. And um, it didn't matter what I was wearing or how I showed up. I think that was, really important because it allowed uh, me and I'm sure other students feel similarly that you were kind of just able to show up as you are and focus more on the learning and less about, um, you know, who am I sitting by? What do I look like? Um, you know, kind of that social aspect of school. I felt like with that removed, I was able to focus more on what we were actually learning and it was just very accommodating for um, students like myself. Um, and surprises, I am um, generally a very active participant in classes, especially when they're in person. And so I noticed that when we transferred to the virtual um, delivery, some of my peers who are typically um, more reserved and silent in face-to-face -face delivery, they were able to um, be very interactive during our online course online class and um, perhaps they felt more comfortable communicating through the microphone or the chat box. And um, so I think it's very possible that virtual learning meets the needs of students with varying learning styles. So I felt um, I didn't feel so pressured to constantly like be kind of on and, um, you know, always raising my hand and participating like I typically do because I felt like other students felt more comfortable kind of joining in that discussion. So that was really great to see. Wonderful. Claretta, what were your experiences like over the last year? What, what did you like about learning and what positive surprises did you find there to be? Um, to be honest, I kind of struggled to come up with a ton of positives. Um, I'm, I'm very... Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of like structured learning. So in person is very much ideal. Um, so it, it was a big adjustment to go online, especially with college where it's, you know, uh, a lot more, um, challenging, I suppose. Um, I, I would agree that I felt a lot more comfortable sharing, um, my opinions and just, you know, the, the raising of hand kind of, uh, through online. So I was a little surprised at that, even though, you know, it, I didn't overly struggle with it uh, before, but I was definitely a lot more comfortable with it. Uh, Loretta, I have a quick follow-up for you. Even in my own house, we talk about in-person feeling more structured, but as I'm listening to you say this, we haven't really explored why that is. Do you have any idea why the in-person felt more, feels more structured to you than the than the remote virtual uh, learning that did or does? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Um, a lot of students um, are a lot more external with their motivation. And I think college and school is um, geared towards people who are internally motivated. And it kind of struggles to, to branch out to those people and meet them where they are. When, when they are externally motivated, and I'm definitely externally motivated. So in person, it's more real, and you, you see the effects of your work, and you see yourself moving forward. So it's, it's easier, and yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's pop down to Vienna High School and ask the same questions. Um, what were the things that you liked about learning during this past year and what surprises for you were there as things look different from time to time? Um, well, actually, we've been very grateful to be able to be in person this whole school year. Um, we've had a few moments of uh, COVID cases and quarantines that we've had to adjust to, but the cooperation and like dedication from all the students to follow the rules and just do what we're told um, has been very um, successful for us. Did that surprise you guys or did that feel different than maybe school felt prior to the pandemic? Uh, it was definitely a lot better. I think all the kids wanted to come back so badly that that's why we're all just listening and following all the rules because we all want to be here rather than um, learning like from home. That's great. Um, let's shift to, up to Isabella and ask you that same question. What were the aspects of learning that you liked or that you thought helped you during the past year and what surprises were there for you? Yeah, so one, um, I'll just go ahead and start with the surprise and not necessarily a bad thing, but just to like pre preface everything. Um, my school district, we changed schedules four times this year. So it was very like back and forth. So um, there definitely were a lot of negatives as well as positives because we were just adjusting so so much to each new schedule. But um, a positive that came out of that was that everyone was able to adapt. And I think that in a society when we are used to routine and regulation and that's where we feel comfortable, I think that it was really important that we learned how to adapt and that we did it so well. And then another thing that I just like wanted to bring out there was that um, at, even the last year when we had got like shut completely down we were all given um chromebooks and that was very useful because now since we are title one school we were able to all interact together and the district did a wonderful job of distributing them um replacing them if any any damages and even helping kids that had internet uh, issues help them set up which i thought was very useful and it was a long time coming so that was really good. And then another thing was that there was a lot of student consideration in this year. I'm part of the Superintendent Student Advisory Council and um, they always wanted our input on what we should do next or how we should do it. There were, uh, even when we had the four separate schedule changes, there were a lot of ideas that were being thrown around and they wanted our input on it. And going off of that is also the fact that we had no harm finals, which I think is really was really, really beneficial to all of the students because, I mean, as all of you know, it was a very, very hard year for us. And I, that kind of just relieved a little bit of the stress being like, okay, you know, I did try my best and this is a second chance, but if I don't do very well, considering the circumstances that it, you know, it is okay. Awesome. That's great. Thank you for covering so much ground in that. And Anne, what about for you? What were things that you liked or that helped you this past year? What surprises were there for you? So I'm a very, very social person. So staying home for me, it wasn't fun at all. Um, even though I am self-motivated, I was able to work independently. So we were able to leave our meets and I thought that I could get a lot more work done, even though it wasn't fun um, at home. So we could, we could work in class, we could work in groups, but then if you wanted to, you could leave the meet and you could get all of your work done by yourself. Um, so that was, there's always a positive. So that was my positive. Um, and then a surprise was we ended up having to, our, um, the, my classmates and I, we had to put our cameras on, even though I always had mine on. That was a surprise for me because it made me realize that I wasn't the only one there um, my other my other classmates and my friends they were all there with us and they all had kind of the same kind of the same ideas as I had and since everybody was participating then um, it made me feel a lot better. What how did students feel about all having to have their cameras on? Was that something that there were side conversations about? Yeah, so um, a lot of people didn't particularly like that because I noticed uh, some of my friends. Um, they would roll out of bed and they were still in their pajamas or they were in their bed. So the fact that they had to put their cameras on, they didn't particularly like. Um, 
So I heard a lot of side like, oh man, I have to show my face during a uh, PE. I have to show my face in math. Like they just didn't really like that, even though it wasn't an issue for me. Okay. That's great. Thank you. So one of my questions for all of you, and this could be based on your own experience, as well as things you've heard about maybe from people in other schools, but that as a student, you think would be really important and useful for all of us as educators to hear from you. What what things that happened this year, what parts of learning in our school from this year do you think should continue in the future? And, and now I'm gonna kind of open it up to whichever one of you wants to jump in first. Okay, well, I guess I will go ahead and go on first. Um, so per our four schedule changes, um, one of them was that we would sign in asynchronously. And um, as of right now, um, we go full time except for Wednesdays when we're let out at 12.08. I think this is a really, really beneficial thing because I was talking to one of my friends yesterday and he was like, you know, these me this mental health day or just this pause in the middle of the week was really, really beneficial to, you know, help restore our mental health. We start the week off strong, we take a little break and we can still do homework and stuff. And then we come back even stronger. And I think it was really beneficial. I would love to see something like this be integrated into our school. And I have talked to the superintendent of our district about it as well. And he thinks that it's also a really good idea. And then just the technology. I know that I had said that I really liked the fact that everyone was getting uh, Chromebooks and you know, just being able to interact online as well as in person i think that is something that we need to integrate because as we're moving forward it seems that that's the that's the direction that we're going so if we can i think it would be just really amazing to be able to use those things that's awesome what other thoughts do other people from the panel have about things that should continue that were tried this year into the future um, I was going to go off of what Isabella said. I'm going to branch off of that. Um, I, I agree with that 100%. So even though we don't have a break in the middle of the week, I feel like for some students, it's very important to have um, a flexible schedule or being able to choose where you learn because everybody learns differently. So whether your family situation, whether just the way that your brain works, it's very important for kids to be able to um, have an option to work which best with their schedule because then they can they feel better about themselves in school they feel that they can work harder and they feel that they can go farther if they're um going to their full potential in school awesome other thoughts so i can share um from my perspective um our courses. Um, sometimes we use Zoom and sometimes we use Microsoft Teams. And so those platforms are a little different and it kind of was a learning curve getting used to both of those. Mm -hmm. But in terms of um, Zoom, I really appreciated the utilization of breakout rooms. That was um, a really fun way to kind of change up the delivery of the um, of the lecture and it also um, was fun when teachers shuffled the um, kind of the groups so that I could work with um, peers that I typically don't interact with or, um, you know, don't gravitate towards for group projects. And so it was really fun to um, be able to do that. And I also feel like um, students felt comfortable in breakout rooms when maybe the pressure of the professor, professor not being, you know, present, it allowed us to kind of, um, you know, share and just, you know, uh, collaborate together. Um, another cool thing about, um, you know, showing up in this virtual space is um, the opportunity to input your name um, in the meeting. Um, and I think this is very um, inclusive and accommodating when students can put their names, which may be different from their um, assigned name or the name registered with the university. Um, they can also add their pronouns in with their name. And I think this just opened such a great opportunity to be inclusive, which may not be as transferable when you're in the classroom setting. And so um, this is something, some of my professors just kind of um, established this as a part of how we show up in this online space by adding their pronouns or introducing themselves that way. And so I just felt like that was so inclusive and really meaningful. Um, to students, especially when the virtual space can seem so disconnected to kind of have that personable um, 
aspect of it that we can show up here as we are. And um, so that was really great to see. And I think that can um, that can be continued in some aspect within um, an in-person delivery, as well as the incorporation of videos and podcasts and online kind of simulation type learning. Um, that was very fun. And I know teachers were very creative and how they were reaching their students, given that we were all you know, using some sort of technology. And so um, it was really great to be able to, you know, for a homework assignment, listen to a podcast or listen to, you know, watch videos. And um, that really added some variation to learning, which I think was really cool. Um, the other component, which is kind of what Isabella mentioned, was the um, mental health and social emotional support. We are all collectively going through this pandemic and um, we have some sort of shared, you know, lived experience through this. And I feel like there has been ex an extension of um, kindness and patience and understanding kind of collectively from, you know, everyone experiencing this in the world. And I felt very validated by my professors this year. And sometimes it just came down to like comments of like, oh, this is really hard. Like, this is hard and you are really resilient for showing up today. And so that was just very encouraging to hear. And also, I feel like it kind of um, connected the experience from us students to professors and kind of feeling like, oh, we're all in this together. We're all learning through this. And so um, I really felt connected to my professors in that way. And I believe that that should continue um, past the pandemic. And you never know what um, students are going through. It's hard to be a student. And I think we could all use um, a little grace every once in a while and that mental support that um, Isabella mentioned as well. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that um, I am so thankful that the president of um, NIU, Lisa C. Freeman, um, really took a public stance on human rights this past year, especially this past semester. Um, we received emails, it seemed like every week about her stance and um, supporting students and um, demonstrating that at NIU, it aims to be an inclusive um, environment standing up for student rights and um, specifically Black Lives Matter was mentioned, LGBTQA plus rights were mentioned and anti-Asian violence. And um, within those messages, connections to um, counseling services on campus and meetings for community support were arranged via Zoom and Teams and um, free resources such as presentation for educational purposes were also provided. And so, I just felt so proud to attend a university knowing that they were supporting um, and advocating for all of their students. And that was just so meaningful for me um, because not only has this year, um, you know, in 2020 brought on the pandemic, but many other things um, kind of just adding stress and, um, you know, hardships on experience in our community. So um, that was really meaningful for me. Awesome, thank you for sharing all that. We've covered such a wide range of things we want to continue from, from this year. Do our other panelists have additional things you guys would like to add that you would like to see continue in learning or in schools in the future that may have been tried in places this year? I wouldn't have anything super specific more so that there's just been a lot of student participation that's um, been added to the experience. It feels more like education has been a joint effort between educators and students. And like, we're all going through this together, obviously, but it, it really feels like um, they're just working with us and we're working with them. And uh, I, I definitely would like that to continue in the future. That's awesome. That's, I mean, that's so critical, the learning. And, and in Vienna, do you guys have anything to add? Well, while you've been in school, it certainly has not in every way looked, looked uh, totally normal. Um, and so were there things that you guys have either experienced or heard about that you think we ought to continue 
uh, in schools and in learning environments moving forward? Um, well, the main difference, obviously, we had to wear masks all the time, and we don't really want that to continue if we can get rid of that. But um, uh, every student was issued a Chromebook, and that was definitely like a positive for everyone to have access to that. Um, and we did have different um, areas that don't have good Wi-Fi and stuff, so mm -hmm. we sent out buses and had different ways to provide Wi-Fi for the students that needed it. Um, the shortened schedule was definitely, I think it was actually very good for us. Um, we get out only an hour earlier, but it definitely gives more free time, like after uh, school for extracurricular activities and also just homework and jobs if students work. So. Yep, those are all really important points. And, and certainly the uh, connectivity issue is, is something that in, in my previous jobs, I've spent a lot of time talking about, um, but it now is part of, of regular people, even not students and not educators, understanding how critical that is. Well, this was just fantastic. Um, obviously, our students, kind of as expected, covered ground that I didn't anticipate we would cover when we sent out these questions. And this is why we ask students. So a virtual round of applause for our students. Um, thank you guys all so much for joining us today. You were incredible. With thank that, you. oh yeah, go ahead. You could say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.